Okay. So I'm gonna just start off with a quick review of the first two points so that if anybody wasn't here on Mother's Day, we can kind of be on the same page. Does everyone, okay, for those of you that were here, would it help if we refreshed with showing you the temple pictures? Raise your hand if you think that's a good idea. So we take the time to do that is what you're telling me? Okay, so we'll do a brief review. We'll grab those pictures so that we can understand the illustration of it, and then we'll practice knowing that only by Holy Spirit power can we do the actual things that Proverbs 31 is encouraging us to do. That's where we're gonna land tonight. So if you want to put a bookmarker in Proverbs 31 and Titus 2, that's where we'll end up later on. We're gonna review just a few other things before that. Sound good? Okay, for those of you that I've never met, my name's Denise and I'm so glad you're here. All the new people that raised their hand. You have to meet, you have to meet April and Taylor at the end though because they wanna, they wanna get to know you. Did they already try and come after you? Probably did, probably did. They probably, they probably did it. Um, this is the deal. I shared a little bit, I'm gonna pray into this first because I wanna ask Holy Spirit to have me share what's from him and completely erase what he doesn't need us to talk about tonight. But I shared on Mother's Day just a little bit about how I wish I would have known this about being a woman after God's own heart before I already destroyed my life, you know? You know, wouldn't it have been good if I could have figured that out beforehand? But I feel like God's really reminding me like whoever's been forgiven much loves much, right? Like he, although all those things have happened and you made some really bad choices, his grace is sufficient. Right, he is able, his love can conquer all of that junk from my past and really move through us. So I just wanna challenge us to believe that for where we're at today, for anybody in here. So Father, we, we come to you thankful that although we've had seasons that we've learned from the world instead of from your word, you're still willing to meet us in all of those places, do a miracle in our hearts, sanctify us day by day, moment by moment, brick by brick, and allow us to understand what it looks like to walk in a Jezebel spirit and to rebuke one. Understand what it looks like when we're in agreement with the Eve syndrome or curse, and then literally confronting it head on, learning to a lifestyle of submission and surrender. You can help us understand the difference between when we're trying to perform for approval or we're operating out of you already approving us because we're sitting in your presence. And so we just say, God, we thank you that though we have had seasons of our life where none of this was known to us, you're still willing. Thank you, God. Thank you for surrounding us with people who know you, that love you, that challenge us, that want us to have deep intimacy with you, not for any weird agenda, just because they love you. We give you thanks for those people in our life. And God, tonight, the title being a woman of valor, none of us in our own strength could possibly be a woman strong in heart and strong in mind. And so we wanna say, thank you that you make yourself available by the power of your spirit to empower us. In your name, Jesus, amen. So we started off talking about Proverbs 31 last time. We talked about who can find a virtuous wife. Her worth is far above rubies. rubies. Does anybody remember Though um, Ruby is really strong on the most scale, very hard, very firm, and yet so beautiful and rich in color, but there's something that makes it unique compared to all the other precious stones. What was it? Good job. Even though it has flaws, inclusions, it still holds its value. And I really feel like, and you know, nobody knows for real in the Bible if this is actually translated the literal word ruby, but that's what they believe that it's translated as. But as we look at that text and as we compare it to that truth about a ruby, it makes so much good sense that God would say, although you've been through, although you've done, you're still so valuable to me. And I need you to know that, right? If, that he would pick that stone of all stones to help us to understand that so that we would know from his perspective we are valuable. And how do we know we're valuable? What did he do? This is our first point. A woman of valor is strong in mind and strong in heart because she's no, she knows, she's experienced 
We call it experiential knowledge. In the Old Testament, Oida, she has knowledge of God because she's experienced his love. She's experienced his presence. She's understood his forgiveness. She's watched him move through her. She's experienced God's healing and his power and his ability to parent or extend grace or to love when it was hard. She's had an experiential knowledge of God. So, a woman of, of valor knows, she's strong in heart and mind because she knows who God is and what God did for her. He sent who? His only son to die on the cross for all of those flaws. Yeah. And then not only did he send him so that we could have forgiveness, be cleansed of our sin and have eternal life, but then what? He gave us this supernatural crazy gift, the third person in the triune Godhead, God the... God the Holy Spirit, so that now God lives inside of you if you say yes to Jesus as Savior. That sounds crazy if you don't know God. How many of you thought when you first heard that, you're like, hmm, something's wrong with you. Why are you telling me that? That's just weird. God lives inside you? Just, I mean, seriously, guys, step outside of the Christianese world for a minute and really try and like wrap your mind around being a non-believer and, and hearing that truth. What do you think they're thinking? She's lost her mind. Can you imagine what people think? But how cool is our God that he's that personal and that available and all you're responsible to do to receive him, to live inside you, is say yes to him as savior and repent of your sin. That means literally turn, confess it and turn from your sin. And as soon as you start to, he empowers you to walk it out. So a woman of valor knows her value. She knows also his voice. So now that he lives inside her, Holy Spirit starts to guide, give wisdom, give discernment, give understanding. She begins to understand what it looks like for her to listen, and then she asks him to help her walk in obedience. And, and, and what's really cool about that is that what make, that right there, learning to walk in obedience is actually what makes her look so beautiful. Isn't that crazy? The outward we talked about in, in 1 Peter, what is it? 1 Peter or 2 Peter 3? Which one, guys? We need to know this by heart. Oh boy, we'll get there. But the outward appearance in God's perspective, right, means nothing compared to what's going on inside. And that's really hard for us. Can you imagine if we just didn't have eyes, how different our life would be? or if our eyes would allow us all to see each other equal, but then life would be no fun, right? But can you imagine if we could see from God's perspective the way that he values you, understand the gifts that he's given you, and then learn to operate because we're hearing his voice out of his power and in agreement with what he says about you and about me. If we're standing there as the church, as the bride of Jesus Christ, the next part, her vocation, her, her call, hands down becomes almost, I don't wanna say effortless, but because you're in union with him and you're one with him, everything changes. It's not a war, it's not a fight. It's like, I know this is what he's inviting me into and if I say yes, he'll empower me to do it. It changes, right? There's not this constant battle because my flesh wants something different than what God wants for me. So I wanna challenge us, if we're in that space still, it's a battle that a woman who knows God's heart for her understands first and foremost, she's his daughter. First role, first part of her vocation, she's his daughter. He built you, he built me for fellowship with him. And when we're missing that, it shows, right? When I, this is, this is so funny. Y'all can know, if you know me, you can know if I've not been in the word for 24 hours. It is ugly. I'm so serious, and I know that sounds like so religious, but when I'm not in the word for 24 hours and I haven't heard what God has to say, now I will know what God says, because I've read it before, or I've heard it before, but that experiential experience, that experience, that experience, that experience wasn't today. It was yesterday, and that's like me eating yesterday and trying to live today, right? I have to be nourished today. I don't depend on the food from 10 years ago that I read when I was in college, because I was in college 10 years ago. 
I don't depend on that to feed me today or to strengthen me today. Imagine how malnourished, right? So a woman of valor understands her value. She knows his voice. She's intimate with him, not just once, but she makes it a practice in her life and everything changes. People can see she's different. And I'm not talking like she just went and she's rolling the, they're rolling the red carpet out for her because she just went to Gucci and she's got all the things. That's not what I mean by different. I mean, the beauty is coming from the inside. The understanding that she has is not from this world. The wisdom that she carries, I don't know where that comes from. The love that oozes out of her is something like I've never seen or experienced before. She's selfless. There's things that she's doing that nobody knows but God, and it's really cool when you catch her. Wow. Right? There's these things that start happening in your life and in your walk that change, and it's coming from the inside, but it ends up the expression outside. <coughs> Proverbs 31 is such an amazing picture of what it looks like for a woman to understand her role to understand her call. But when we open that book and we go to that chapter, it also is so convicting. Like, I hate it. Like, like hard sometimes, right? If you open it with the wrong attitude or if you open it in a bad mood or if you open it with a, um, in agreement with a self-condemning spirit, you can walk away from that chapter and just be like, not for me. I don't do that. Titus 2, same thing. Hopefully we'll get there. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna take a second. I, I think PT, oh, he's, for some reason, he's listening to some song. I don't know what it is, the song, so if anybody knows, you should probably tell me because he's been saying it and he doesn't remember which song. But it's in the line, it keeps saying, he knows me best, yet loves me most. Right? When a woman after God's own heart, a woman of valor who's strong in mind and heart understands that no matter where we've been or what we've done, God knows you best, inside out, upside down, every flaw, and yet loves you the most. Something shifts in how we trust him. Like you know that he has your best interest. No matter who's challenging you with what or how he's challenging you, the other side of that situation, you're like, I don't know why I'm in it. Matter of fact, I hate that I'm in it but I trust you. This doesn't feel good, but I trust you. You knew this circumstance would happen and it's being misconstrued and nobody understands the whole real picture, but I trust you. And then on the other side of that circumstance, there's a refining that has gone on because you're so intimate with the Father that although those things were misunderstood going on in your life, on the other side of whatever that thing was, you've been refined because you've drawn near. Right? Instead of being angry, instead of setting up that wall between you and the person that issues with, it's a constant vertical road between you and the Lord. And then what happens is the walls remain down instead of come up to go into self-defense, self-protective mode, because that's what we do, or cut off, or gossip. Did you know? Instead of that, it's this vertical like, I don't know what you're doing, God but I trust you. I know you have my best interest at hand. I don't understand, but I believe you're good and the outcome is gonna be good and I'm gonna be refined. And when you know that, you truly become the temple of the most high God. It's I'm gone and he, I love how the message translation says this verse in Psalm 84, and I've said this so many times to you, agape loves. He now begins to travel on your life. You become the road that he travels on. He says, she's willing, she's willing, she's willing. Doesn't matter what the world's doing, doesn't matter who's hurt her, she's giving me her hurt, she's giving me her pain, she's giving me her loss, she's not standing in judgment and complaining and criticizing everyone that walks by. No, instead, she's allowing me to walk on her life so that people see me instead of her when she's going through it. Wow. Is that an amazing miracle. Like we get to give him all the things that hurt us and he gets to say, let me walk it out through you so they can see me. Yeah. Let me walk it out through you so they can know me. 
And as we make ourselves available to something so simple, we become one with him, the temple of the most high God. His life is now an expression through us, and we're gonna see it illustrated here coming up, but let's check it out when you're in him. Paul, in the book of Colossians chapter two, I'm gonna go there before we go to Proverbs 31, says this. Colossians two, verse two. This is Paul sharing with the church in, in, in Colossae. This is him speaking over him, over them this truth. He's praying this, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding and knowledge. Understanding and to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. Verse three, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And now I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words, beware, verse eight, I'm dropping down to, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. If you were here on Mother's Day, I expressed to you all these things that I did in my life that were so ungodly, and he's saying, the world has taught you wrong, honey. Let me live my life through you. And right here, he's saying, instead of listening to the empty deceit and the tradition of men, be one with me. And you, verse three, you'll receive all these hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Back in verse two, it said, all the riches and full assurance of understanding. And this is the thing. When we choose to partner with all the other things, hurt, pain, loss, we miss out on those riches. It's only when we choose to co-labor with him and his Holy Spirit that we get to receive understanding, that we get to receive knowledge, that we get to receive the treasuries of his wisdom. And then he empowers us to live it out like the Proverbs 31 woman describes. Verse nine in that same chapter in Colossians says, for in him, so if you're in him, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. This is Jesus personified. God is, Jesus is God personified. So in the same way that Jesus is God personified, he's saying, if you're a co-heir with Christ, guess what? The same way I walked through Jesus, I can walk through you. Is that crazy that you get to be the temple of the most high God? Verse 10 says, and you are what? Can you say it with me if it's up there? Empty, lost, sad, depressed, angry, bitter, lonely? What does it say? Say it with me again. You are who is the head of all principality and power, which he's going up against this crazy spirit in this church, and now he says, verse two in the next chapter, set your mind on things above, for you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So then he goes on later on in the chapter, put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, and name all the other things. Filthy language, all of the things, and put on your new man, the one that he made the exchange for. And this is what blows my mind when I think of that. Jesus says, it's that simple. Make the exchange. You get to have that all day, every day. It's a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. So when we were together on Mother's Day, what we didn't get to is this next part, that willingness to yield daily. How many of you wake up, first thing you do is, Father, fill me, you start singing, I can't wait to be yours. What's like the first thing that goes on as soon as you wake? Let's be honest, be honest. First thing, you wake up. Oh, give me my coffee. Laundry, coffee, what did I miss yesterday? Text, email, trying to make up for all the things you didn't catch, right? Does your mind go there first or is it like cloud, your holy cloud, you just go do the right thing? Y'all, come on. Some, some days we win, right? Some days are tough. But if we're really, truly, genuinely hungering for the things of God, we start to practice. One day we're winning, the next day we're winning, the next day we're winning, and we just keep practicing. And then as you become more and more faithful in those little things, start with five minutes, then 10, then 20, then it becomes an hour, and then you're like, wait, I have to leave, this is crazy, it's been three hours. And it goes by in five minutes. But it's the daily discipline of just saying yes to just a few minutes. And then what happens is the temple, you become the temple of the most high God. We are already being built into 
It's a promise in God's word, the temple of the Most High God. But this is the deal. I wanna um, just hit on what we shared on Mother's Day. If you could pull up the first temple illustration. When we're the temple of the Most High God and we say yes to Jesus, we were reminded he gives us a new spirit, which is his Holy Spirit we already talked about. He gives us a new heart, new willpower, but there's still the fighting in the flesh. All of the gray is the flesh. The things that have happened in our life might look like stored in those little boxes on the very outside of the gold box which really this in the Old Testament tabernacle, Old Testament temple, represents us as the temple today who's housing God the Holy Spirit. And so this is like such a fun way to see it visually because now we get to remember, okay, hang on, things have happened to me in my past. The enemy knows it and I have a tendency. So there's two things working against us, right? You're new if you've said yes to Jesus as Savior. Brand new creation in Christ Jesus. So that's where you see that perfect gold, new spirit, new heart, new willpower. But that we talked about the natural will being representative of free will, right? So because Jesus lives in you, he's so gentle, he's so kind, he allows us the choice if we let him live through us today or if we're gonna live out the way we want to today. So with that choice, it's a moment-to-moment thing. How many of you know, if you're, if you're experiencing this regularly, we, I always illustrate it with the whole Tangled movie, right? She gets out of the tower, what happens? Do you guys know the story? Have you seen it? I should have played the video. Okay, so this is a, an animation of a princess who is stuck in a tower whose hair is the size, I don't know, like a mile long. And she gets out and she starts, her mom wants to hold her in there because this hair has power or whatever. She gets out and she starts having this wrestling match between, I shouldn't have done this, I should have done that, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done that. She's like wrestling back and forth, back and forth. She's, oh, this is so fun. I shouldn't have, oh, this is so fun. I shouldn't have done this. That's like a picture of me and you when we're in the flesh versus when we're in the spirit. Right, like one minute we're like, oh my goodness, God just spoke to me this crazy cool thing. I was able to pray with this person. I got to have lunch with that person. I got to do this with this person. You feel the presence of God moving through you. You see that God can't wait to be traveling on your life in this world so that other people get to know him. And then suddenly your sister says something. (laughs) Or your mom says something. Or your dad or your spouse. And then suddenly you're just like, I will say the wicked witch of the West. (laughs) It shifts, right? And so that choice comes where that picture goes, okay, hang on. I know what God wanted to do through me. And if you could show the picture of the squiggle line with the quenching of the Holy Spirit, that would be super helpful back there. So I know what God wanted to do through me, but I'm really irritated with this person and they keep saying the same thing and I forgive them a hundred times, but she just said it again. And then all of a sudden, what we do, see that little black squiggly line? Instead of God's life able to flow through us, we make our own fleshy choice and say, I'd rather stand in bitterness. I'd rather stand and hold her at arm's length. In that moment, instead of making the exchange with God and letting his spirit come out, I say, no. I love how Pastor Todd was saying yesterday, mine. Right, like the kids come out already selfish. This is exactly us in whatever age we're in. Instead of yielding to Holy Spirit, not on the basis of whether or not the person in front of you is worth it. In God's eyes they are, but in yours in the moment, you might feel like, I would rather take my shoe off and throw it. Anybody ever been there? But in this moment, we get to choose to die to self and something happens. Instead of anger, frustration, hatred, retaliatory comments, passive aggressive comments, gossip, whatever wants to come. Instead of it, we quench the spirit there and we, instead of going back to that, oh, she did it again, resentment box, or I can't believe her, I'm gonna stand in unforgiveness again, or the doubt one, or the fear of the insecurity one, she said, this comment and it made me feel so insecure and how I can't believe her. She's always judging me. And then insecurity then is the window that opens up the enemy, the way for the enemy to come in and settle into that space instead of the Lord taking hold. It's a choice. It's a choice. My natural will is in the gray area. This is an expression in the outer court of my outward body expression. The little inner court, the little square on the inside is my inward thoughts. 
my inward attitudes. The outer court is my outward expression. I can choose to live there in the flesh, or I can instead, if you could show the third picture quickly, that would be great. I can instead surrender what I feel like to God through confession, make the exchange and let his love continue to flow, even on the one who's unlovable, even on the one who's undeserving. And it's hard because this is a faith choice. My feelings are, I hate them. And his will is, let's forgive and walk in my love, agape. Agape isn't based on emotion, right? So if we can learn to submit our emotion to the authority of the Holy Spirit, he washes over whatever that emotion is. If it's hurt, if it's pain, if it's loss, if it's anger, if it's unforgiveness, if it's bitterness, he takes that out of you. Didn't remember, it says put off the things of the flesh and put on Christ. All it is is confession. You put off the things of the flesh through confession. You put on Christ. Holy Spirit now has freedom to move through your vessel and to operate in your sphere of influence with those people. It's a choice. It's free will. It's you saying yes to him and no to your flesh that wants to rise up or the enemy tactics to pull on old heartstrings from your past. And then we have this opportunity to let God live his life like He says in Psalm 84, traveling on, or you're the highway. Your life becomes the highway on which he travels. Is that a miracle? Okay, we've been through it. So we get to Proverbs 31. So what does this look like outwardly for women? This is what I felt like was so important for us to know. I feel like as women, we kind of shrink back often. And instead of operating in this authoritative space, We shrink back into those emotions that I was just mentioning, fear, insecurity, jealousy, um, anxiety, you name it. Anybody ever go through any of that? I mean, come on, this is the war of the century, right? Like we're always gonna hit head on. This is constantly gonna be an opportunity. One, you have a great morning going on, one person says one thing the wrong way or looks at you. You go sideways quick, right? And so we just get to make that exchange and then he continues to empower us to live this out. So I'm gonna read Proverbs 31 and, and, and I want you to ask, okay, as we go into this text, I want you to remember what you hear from um, 2 Timothy 1 where it says, God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind. So power, because you have Holy Spirit, dunamis power living inside you now. Love because Jesus' love is moving in and through you. It says he gives you his heart. And then sound mind is, as soon as I take that step of faith to believe that what he says is true and he will make the exchange, my mind becomes his mind. I receive the mind of Christ. I'm making that exchange. It's so cool. So as you're reading this, keep that in mind. Like I get to have all those things to be empowered to do this thing. Proverbs 31, I'm gonna briefly read through it and then I ask some friends to share with us. What's the Proverb 31 message that you feel like, ugh, that verse is hitting me hard and I feel like I'm struggling through it right now and can we pray it out over us? So as I read it, I want you to do the same thing. I'll read these few verses and as I'm reading it, you pick out one that feels like, oh, that's a stab in my heart, that one's hard, that one's challenging. Pick one and then we're gonna talk about it here in a sec. You're gonna talk about it with the Lord. So again, verse 10, who can find a virtuous wife? Her worth is far above rubies. Just so you know, James, these aren't all gonna be in there because I took some out. Verse 11, the heart of her husband safely trusts her so he will have no lack of gain. Verse 12, get ready, girls. She does him good and not evil all of the days of her life. It's like, can your motivation be pure and not selfish, right? Okay, 13, how many of you do this every day? She seeks wool and flax. (laughs) Y'all, what in the world? And willingly works with their hands, not Well, uh, that was my paraphrase. I won't touch that yet. 14, she's like the merchant ships. Y'all like a merchant ship? She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maid servants. Y'all have servants around the ear making sure you're feeding and taking care of? She considers a field and buys it and from her profits, she plants a vineyard. 
I love this verse. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. And she stretches out her hand to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law, say this one with me, of, yeah. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread, ooh, of idleness. This one got me good. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. And I love this last little part. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gate. Remember we talked about the woman being the crown of the husband on Mother's Day? The wife is the crown of her husband. And if you're living this proverb out, you better believe she's looking like a crown. The cool thing about this text is, like we said before, he's not going to give us an assignment that he's unwilling to empower us to do, yeah. right? He doesn't assign or give the encouragement of this text and say, you're on your own. No, he says, I'm willing. If you want this life, I'm willing to do it through you. So if you guys